Hello, welcome along to Sportsbet TV. Paul Alster back with you for uh, Saturday, the 31st of July, where I have tips for you on the final day of Glorious Goodwood and also a selection as well over at the Galway Festival. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, please press the subscribe button and then you'll be able to stay in touch with all my free tips that will be alerted to you uh, on this channel. And uh, if you don't know me, well, I'm a former uh, racing commentator and journalist and form analyst and uh, starting price returner, amongst other things. And thanks to those of you that uh, responded to my uh, points about the SPs um, that I put up in uh, my previous bulletin. I'm going to go into this in a bit more depth because I think there's some very interesting factors that we need to look at when we're looking at the way the SPs are put together these days. And I do have a fairly unique insight having been part of the process that used to do the starting prices on course before everything was uh, digitalized a few years ago. I'll come back to that. And also, again, thanks to those of you who gave us uh, your experiences of what happened on the first day at Glorious Goodwood when three of my four selections were non-runners due to the ground. And very interesting to see the way different firms have dealt with that. I can tell you that my firm, I'm not going to say who it is, but they actually miscalculated the amount that I was due to be returned because of the non-runners. So do check uh, your account uh, to be sure that you've got the right money back when horses don't run. Now, very quickly before I come to the four uh, for Saturday, uh, just a few words. This is being recorded Friday early afternoon and a few words about those that ran on Thursday where it was a fairly mixed bag. In the two-year-old race, the Richmond Stakes, it was an absolute farce because as uh, the Racing Post analyst uh, pointed out, it actually turned into a two furlong sprint. I can't ever recall a two-year-old um, six furlong race where they basically walked through the first three furlongs. It didn't suit our selection, Giza Sub, who pulled very hard and eventually weakened. He'd been really well backed from the 14 to one I suggested down to have just about half those odds. I'm sure he's better than he showed there. Then later on on the card on Thursday, digital runner cracker for us, gave us a great run, uh, 14 to one finished third there. So a nice each way profit on that one. While over in Ireland in the Galway hurdle, uh, sole pretender, we put it up at 14s. It was back down to seven to one, a huge gamble. And the starter called them in six times. It was absolutely ridiculous. I was going berserk on the Irish commentary service. It was ridiculous. And when, when eventually they did jump away, sole pretender who had been to the four on the previous five lineups actually was left in behind, was never able to get a position. And although he stayed on, having been in a very tightly packed field, stayed on in the closing stages to be eighth of 20, the race just was um, one to just draw a line under. It didn't work for him. So anyway, that was what happened on Thursday. I've already seen Rajinsky didn't go well in the first race of ours on Friday, but I'm very hopeful that the others will go very well. And I've seen that Ross Collin that I put up at a 10 to 1 price has been a big gamble uh, over uh, at Goodwood, while uh, run for Oscar over in Ireland, I suggested it might be 12 to 1. There were no prices up there. The best price ever offered, and I can't claim any bigger than the 15 to 2 that was available. It was back down to 7 to 2. Last time I looked, trading at 4 to 1 favourite at uh, Galway on Friday. So there really has been a massive move for the horse I highlighted, run for Oscar. Let's hope uh, it runs as good as uh, uh, the move for it would suggest. So very quickly now onto the four for Saturday, and they're all really decent prices. I take you first to Goodwood. Just before I do, a reminder that uh, I'm delighted to say I've been asked to offer selections uh, of uh, shorter prices and more sort of focused on those and uh, more towards the four of the market for freebets.com at YouTube. So do check that out, youtube.com, freebets.com is the name of the site. So if these bigger price horses I mentioned don't appeal to your sense of adventure, there are three over at freebets.com that would really be worth taking a look at. Anyway, Goodwood 155 Saturday. It is the Stewards print, the consolation race for the Stewards Cup for those that didn't make the cut. 28 runners, six furlongs up the hill and then straight down. Luck in running is an absolute essential. I'm not gonna go through all the different runners. I'm just gonna tell you that the horse that got in at the very bottom of the weights, number 28, is the Lamplighter. 
and the lamplighter is trained by my good pal George Baker, who's trained horses for me in the past, and Ray Dawson, who's uh, really making a name for himself this season, is on board the lamplighter. Now, George also runs Mamilius in the race, by the way, who picked up a £6 penalty for being awarded a race at Epsom recently. I think that has probably scuppered his chance. But I think the Lamplighter has a major chance because this is a horse uh, who, he's a fully exposed handicapper, but the thing about him is he loves Goodwood. He's got a great record at the track. He's won three from eight. He's been placed a further twice. Among the three occasions he didn't place, one was when fourth of 11, a close-up fourth. Uh, the other was on his debut when he was green as grass and down the field. And the other was on heavy ground, which he doesn't like. But when he's got half-decent ground, this horse of this kind of mark is capable. Now, he doesn't like extremes of going, as I said. Anything from good to soft to good to firm suits him, as does the all-weather. And he's been very, very consistent this term. He's finished third, fourth, third, third, first and third and the wing came over the course and distance one of those three successes here on june the 6th he ran on really well off a mark of 77 he was then third at epsom off a mark of 80 last time and now with ray dawson claiming the three pounds it takes him back to the 77 over which he won course and distance Obviously, this is a much tougher race, but I think he's going to go well. George nearly pulled it off with Hieronymus earlier in the week, who ran better than expectations, caught in the last stride at a big price in a handicap. And I think the Lamplighter in the Stewart Sprint at Goodwood 155 has a massive chance. I see Bet365 offering 25 to 1 each way for five places. As always, shop around, look for the firm that either suits you with the more places offered or uh, a better price um, and try and find firms that will offer you the starting price if it proves to be bigger than the price you take. But 25 to one each way, the light lighter for George, come on Georgia, you can do it uh, in the steward sprint on Saturday, 155 at Goodwood. Now my second selection is in the stewards cup. Now talk about, you know, a, a lot of uh, tipsters, they're gonna run a mile from these type of races. And I've spent a while going through the Stewards Cup. It's a race I've picked the winner of a few times, I can tell you over the years. Uh, it's been a, a good race to me. Uh, and 28 run, of course, over the six furlongs. Fresh is a possible favorite uh, for um, James Fanshawe and Kieran Schumark, who won on Lady Bothorpe earlier in the week. A wonderful, wonderful success for William Jarvis. He's got a massive chance of a big double here with Fresh who only found Rohan too good for it, caught close home in the Wokingham at Ascot and only gone up three pounds. William Haggis, always to be feared and big handicapped. He's got Hurricane Iver, short end second in a big heritage handicap over five uh, furlongs at Ascot, carries a six pound penalty. Looks like they could be seven to one joint favourites uh, going into the Friday evening trading. Amongst those that I'll just give a quick shout out to are Chiefs for Chiefs, who run very well and plays for us at Big Odds at Ascot. Uh, Michael Dodds' Comanche Falls, I think, will run well. And not just because uh, it's connected to Leeds United, my team, uh, but I think Bielsa could go well. And don't forget Samagand, who won the race last year. He's um, a pound higher, but do remember he beat Oxted earlier in the season at April, and his last two runs have been in Group 1s. So the Stewards' Cup actually represents a drop back in class for Summergand. But I really do think there's one here that um, is really worth you considering very, very seriously. And the horse is called Great Ambassador. He's trained by Ed Walker, who, as we know, is having a, a brilliant season with Starman and others. And William Buick rides here for Ed Walker. Now, Great Ambassador is just a four-year-old by Exceed and Excel. He's out of a mare that some of you may remember uh, called Snoqualmie Girl, who was very talented, run in listed and group races, all the way up to two miles. So you would expect that great ambassador would possibly be even a middle distance horse. Now, it was originally trained by Rafe Beckett, who trained it to win a seven furlong novices event at Chelmsford in 2019 as a juvenile. It only ran three times as a three-year-old, including finishing seventh of 22 in the Britannia Handicap, over a mile on its debut at three, and it went on to be second at Kempton over seven furlongs of a mark of 88 in October of last year. And then it joined Ed Walker in March. Now, it's interesting sometimes when trainers receive a horse, how 
something can stand out to them different to the previous handler. It's no reflection on the previous handler. It's just that sometimes a different set of eyes sees something different. I always remember a very good friend of mine, Chris Thornton, back in the day, training a horse over two miles to win the Brown Jack Handicap at Ascot. Um, it was sold, went to Australia, and the first time they ran it in Australia, it won at something like 60 to one over seven furlongs. So it's amazing how different trainers can see different things in a horse. And Ed Walker clearly seems to think that instead of being a mile, a great ambassador is more of a sprinter. And uh, this horse uh, joined him in March and has gone sprinting. And on its debut for him over six furlongs at Kempton, it absolutely hacked up. And it beat a decent sort in Bar Bill. And that was off a, a 90 rating. Bar Bill set to run on Saturday. And then it finished third in a hot race at the Newmarket Guinness meeting, over six furlongs off a mark of 97 on good to firm ground. And it was third to Chill Chill, who's amongst the market principals for the Stewards Cup, and who has since gone on to win a group three at Newcastle and finished ninth in the July Cup. Won by Starman, of course, trained by Ed Walker, who will have a line through Chill Chill uh, to uh, Great Ambassador. You still with me? I hope so. So, at Newmarket, back in May, Chill Chill and Great Ambassador met off level weights. There was three and three quarter lengths between them. Now, a Great Ambassador gets a stone, and I think that is really significant. He's got the decent ground he likes. I think Ed Walker has figured out that this horse goes well fresh, so he hasn't run him since the Guineas meeting. He's drawn seven, which is what it is. I'm sure there'll be plenty of pace across the course. If he gets the luck in running, I think Great Ambassador is an unexposed sprinter who could really run a massive race. 20 to 1 offered the best price I can see at the moment with Bet Victor for five places each way. That'll do for me. Great Ambassador for the Stewards Cup, the 340 at Goodwood on Saturday. And on to my third selection, which is over at Galway, where the 420 race on Saturday is a 100,000 euro uh, mile and a half handicap. And as you would expect for a big prize like that, Maximum field here of 18. They're going expected to be good to yielding, yielding thereabouts. Uh, one last year by the great Princess Zoe, who went on to win uh, a group one, of course, uh, for Anthony Mullins. Willie Mullins has won four of the last five. And Tony Martin has won two of the last seven. So trainers that do tend to uh, highlight this race. Now, of course, there's no prices to go on, as I rattled on about on my previous um, bulletin, which is a shame because it makes it difficult for me to highlight specific prices. But what I can tell you is that the Racing Post uh, forecast that Iowa is likely to be a favorite for Aidan O'Brien at around six to one. It was fourth in a listed race at Down Royal last time, having previously won the Ulster Derby, which is a fairly grand name for a, a, a decent handicap. It won it off 79, but has gone up 13 pounds now to 92. I'll be surprised if I was good enough. The top weight is Bolivar with 10 stone for Paddy Toomey. It's a horse who progressed really nicely over in Ireland during 2020, and it was sixth at the Curra in a listed race on its only start this season over a mile and a quarter. The extra two furlongs should suit. There's also an interesting one for Joe Lyons called Kamora, who was second in the NACE November, November handicap at the end of last season and uh, was third um, at Garan Park in April on its only run this term. But I was broadcasting the racing earlier in the week uh, at Galway and a real eye catcher for me, and it might be that other people have spotted it too, was In From The Cold. And In From The Cold is trained by Michael Mulvaney, a good Irish trainer, and the very capable Gary Carroll is on board. Gary rode a double earlier in the week at the Galway Festival. Now, to be fair, In From The Cold has never won beyond a mile and a quarter, but it's never had many chances to go beyond that. But it really does shape as though it'll stay. And it ran a series of very good races earlier on in this turf season in 2021, including finishing fourth to the very high class group one winner Broom in a mile and a quarter contest at Nace in March. It was then six to the same horse in a group three uh, beaten six lengths. And then it was second over a mile and a half in a handicap off a mark of 96. Now, when it was ridden in that race, believe me, it should have won. It really should have won that day. It was ridden by an apprentice that has never ridden a winner 
uh, called Melanie Horseman, and she did her very best, but she just wasn't able to offer the assistance the horse needed. And uh, to be honest, you could almost say in some degrees, it's a winner without a penalty. It had a two month break after that, and it came back on Tuesday at Galway in the very valuable BMW mile. And after being a little slow to jump away, it had to try and find its way through horses, finish like a train to be fourth of the 18 behind um, Sir Jack Thomas, really finishing strongly. I'm sure it will now be spot on with that run under its belt, going back up in trip, which will definitely suit. And I'm estimating, and only an estimate, and as you know, sometimes we can be close, other times we can be miles out, but eight to one each way, I think is a sporting shout at an estimate on the price for in from the cold at Galway 420. There should be five places on offer each way, and that will do for me. I saw that on Time Forms card, they're estimating it at 16 to one. I think it'll never be that. I mean, I don't know how they'd come up with that. I'd be very happy to take it right now, Time Form, if you get on the phone and offer me it. But eight to one, I think, might be a fair estimate for In From The Cold, Galway, 420 Saturday. And then very quickly, on to my final selection of the week of what's been a really busy week at Glorious Goodwood, uh, a meeting that after day three, we were showing a profit uh, over the uh, Goodwood and Galway Festival, mainly due to Royal Rendezvous, 10 to one win for us in the Galway plate. But hopefully, by the time these run, we might have something else in the pack. So Goodwood 445, the last race of the meeting is the Signature Apprentice Handicap, 18 runners, um, it is over nine furlongs, and on the early prices, and all credit to them, the only ones going up early as of Friday early afternoon is William Hills, and they go 11 to 2 the field, that's a Rebel Territory for Reese Clutterbuck, uh, this horse a good third at Ascot last time out. Now, I'm sure you don't need me to tell you that jockey ability counts for a great deal in any race, but in particular in apprentice races where some of the jockeys will be just about as good as a fully fledged jockey and others will still have a lot to learn. Now of the 18 jockeys, five of them do not claim because they've ridden sufficient winners uh, and are experienced enough and good enough not to be claiming. And amongst those five is the excellent young Italian rider Marco Gianni. And this, I think, is the next star rider from uh, Italy. Indeed, I was in Italy a few weeks ago um, chatting to some people that are very closely involved in the Italian thoroughbred industry. And they were saying they think he is really really top class Marco Gianni. Of course, he won the Royal Hunt Cup at Royal Ascot um, on uh, Real World. And then he followed up on that horse in the Steventon Stakes at Newbury the other week, collaring our selection D-Rab in the last few strides, giving it a brilliant ride to win. And in great form, this uh, Marco Gianni, he's won on seven of his last 28 rides. 25% strike rate for an apprentice is really going some. It's as good as any top jockey. And here he's been booked by Charles Hills. So Charles Hills trains and Mark Guiano rides Fantasy Believer, a horse who's only had the one run at Goodwood in the past. And that was in August of last year, where it was second over course and distance on soft ground off 82. It was second at Windsor off 91 in May over a mile, and then was third in the group over on the far side chasing real world in the Royal Hunt Cup. But overall, it finished down the field off 93. You can ignore its uh, latest run at Sandown where it was slowly away, but it still ended up staying on well to be beaten only four and a half lengths. I think as is usual in apprentice races, they're gonna go like the clappers. And I think they're gonna go a very strong pace. Fantasy believers should be able to settle. And then I'm really hoping Marco Ghiani is gonna be able to come through them and pick them up. The horse has been dropped two pounds since uh, its uh, Windsor run. I think 20 to one each way, 20 to one each way for five places generally on offer for Fantasy Believer in the 445 at Goodwood will give us a proper shout. So those are our four uh, for Saturday. Uh, let's hope they all run well. Uh, the Stewards Cup and the Stewards Sprint are gonna be cavalry charges. We'll need some luck in running. About time we had a little bit of luck and a bit of rub of the green. And remember if these big price runners just uh, don't float your boat, then over at freebets.com on YouTube channel, uh, you'll be able to see my three selections at shorter prices, but still very workable prices uh, if you want to take a look at those. But for now, from me, Paul Alster, thanks for being with me for Glorious Goodwood 
and the Galway Festival, and I'll be back next weekend with more racing advice. Bye-bye for now from me at Sportsbet TV.